comes from a political dynasty and has carved out a successful career as a journalist and author. Rachel Johnson has added a new string to her bow, dishing out sex advice to older people. Here to tell us more, it's Rachel Johnson. <laughs> Target audience. <laughs> it's not just older people, it's everybody. Oh, you know, right. we don't want to be discriminatory. That's true. I mean, true. you know, some of the advice I've got is so good, it's good for everybody. Oh. Anyway, hello, Kate. Hi, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Do you want a little hors d'oeuvre before we get to sex? <laughs> 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 I, I love this expression you use about rolling the hay, though. I, I mean, made that one up. Oh, did you? That's old stuff. Well, I was trying to think, what is it? An apple a day keeps the doctors at bay, so I changed it to a roll in the hay keeps the divorce lawyers at bay. Uh, <laughs> very good. Like okay. what you How often there. do we have to do that, then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is up to you, Nadia. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you don't... Th so there's not, like, a, a prescription, if you like? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I, luckily, for this new column for The Telegraph, I... I deploy a crack team of therapists and counsellors and psychosexual this and hypnotist that. I mean, it, it's a whole new world out there. So I'm learning. Right. Deep so dive. much. <laughs> it's a ooh, deep dive indeed. <laughs> but you've yeah. been married 30 years, so I mean... 31. 31? Yeah. So yeah. you must be doing something, right? Yeah. Well, We're I talking about pet names a bit later. Do you have a pet name for your husband? I do, actually. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> what Doesn't is everybody? <laughs> Um, he, oh, he'll hate me. I don't. He's probably not watching. I think he's driving somewhere. Um, I call him Bobby, and he calls me Bobby. Why? Wait, why? Where did it come well, from? Well, I've always called my boyfriends Bobby, and when I married, <laughs> <laughs> it's just easy. He was the official Bobby, and now he's yeah. He's, he's the big Bobby. He's the big Bobby. <laughs> Where did Bobby so, come yeah. from, though? Why? Why was it Bobby for I all of them? I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those easy things to say. Yeah. So if I ever start calling any of you men in the audience Bobby, get worried. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can talk. Your fella calls you Joan, and you don't know yes, why. Joan. Yeah, that's he calls a pet you name. Joan. Well, yeah, it's sort of Joanna, just shortened well, to Joan, nice. and then now it is just like Joan. So if you've got, you know, a card or anything like that, it's Joan. <laughs> My brother-in-law calls his wife Wall. And he calls her wall because they say it's like talking to a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm so yeah. He's dead. <laughs> I don't know if it's affected. <laughs> now, listen, wall. aside from that, you yeah. have your podcast, which is Difficult Woman. Relaunching I... last yes, week. Yes, absolutely. So, how are we defining difficult? That's a really good question. And some women don't like it. For example, I asked Bianca Jagger and she said, yes, but I don't want to be thought of as a difficult woman. But I think the problem with women is they're often not difficult enough. Mm. And the truth is, it's called difficult women because remember when Ken Clark was caught off mic talking mm. about Theresa May, yeah. mm -hmm. who has not done it yet. Theresa, I'm coming after you. <laughs> and uh, he said, I work with Theresa May, bloody difficult woman. Yes. And I thought, that's, that's mm. it. And Because Theresa May, you call her bloody difficult, but she's our second female prime minister, mm. you know. And mm. so there is obviously something to be said for being difficult. And you, mm. because you well, have to be. That shame that's attached to it. Mm. Like now. Shame. I mean, no, there was for me, I'm in my I'm gonna be 60 this year, and I actually love the fact that part of my character is to be difficult. I don't have any shame about it anymore. Don't ever be ashamed. Because of that. I think we so often we've just got to be one thing or the other. We're with some yeah. of many mm. parts, aren't we? We're difficult, we're wonderful, we're awful, we're fantastic, mm. we're terrible. And being difficult is just such a slur for a lot of women. They oh, feel I think we've been told no. though, not yeah. to be difficult. That's, you know, yeah. be mm. quiet, to be do as you're told, be, be good. good. Don't yeah. if, if if a woman kicks off, they're a diva, they're mm. this, that, the other, uh, they're difficult. Whereas I think if a man does it, it's a completely they're different They're powerful, thing. they're a yeah. leader, yeah. they have authority. Mm. But every time a woman shows any of those characteristics, you know, she's crushed. Well, people yeah. try to crush her, so and, uh, mm. don't be crushed. Ever. There's a lot of the signals mm. that you get when you're young, though, you know, exactly. um, mm. uh, the way that you're brought up. Now, you were brought up with <laughs> uh, the me. middle girl. <laughs> well, that's the thing, you I were have four the middle... brothers. Four brothers. Yeah. One girl, and obviously... And a half-sister. So I've got three brothers. I goes Boris, me, Leo, Joe, Julia, Max. Right. So, you know, I was brought up like a boy. Mm -hmm. So, as a boy, went to boys' prep school, played rugby, cricket. So, you know, I never ex 
I never really God, behaved how like awful. a girl. Sounds exhausting. I don't know how to behave yeah. like a girl. No, it was oh, fun. Was, it was, it was it? fun, that Was it yeah. really? Yeah, fun. Haven't you changed oh. the format as well for this series? Oh, because, yes. Yeah, when you say about a difficult one, yeah. I'm so glad you asked me that, Jo, because <laughs> I've done about 130 women. And one of the format questions is, what was the most difficult time of your life? And I realised that so many women were talking about the difficulties of of looking after children and then old people and older parents and working. Because, of course, if they're sitting in the difficult women's studio, that they're a public figure in many ways. Mm. And then I realised this is becoming very, very repetitive. And then the other thing they said was the time their parent died. And it was becoming so sad. And also, I realised that this was such a universal theme in women's lives, you know, caring mm. and then the death of a parent that I thought for the new series, I was going to change it to when have you had to be most difficult, more Bodicea, more Viking, mm. you know, overcome challenges and obstacles to change our society. So that's what I've done for this series. And, do mo and, do mo and how do most women respond to that? Are they reluctant to go there or...? Well, I haven't... I mean, I don't expect women to say, yes, I changed society by this, but weirdly, the woman who I've interviewed... Uh, who the podcast is dropping on Monday, is a woman called Tanya Ednan Laparus, whose daughter Natasha died after eating a baguette she'd bought at Heathrow, oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a terrible tragedy. Her daughter died on a British Airways flight to Nice. But she has changed the law now around the lab labelling of ingredients. Yeah. And so she has maybe saved countless lives. Mm. And so she turned that tragedy into what she calls a terrible victory. Yeah. So, to my mind, mm. she's an ideal person for my podcast, of course. <laughs> can, I, um, yeah. can I offer you Mylene class? I don't know if Mylene... Oh, yeah, you. she is Mylene class, as we be... call her, at, at Global, cos yeah. she works at Global, where I work yeah. as well. Total class. Yeah. Anyone, yeah. you're all... Everyone is invited, you know. I... Because we're all difficult. It's not just <laughs> that, but... What I love about the podcast is that sometimes you think, I really want to get this incredibly famous person to do my podcast, but the podcast economy is really, really competitive. Mm. And um, actually, what I really like is finding somebody and, and bringing them to the public and sharing Absolutely. their story anew that they haven't heard a million times. Yeah, because I think that is why people go to podcasts, to find yeah. something they're maybe not getting yeah. mainstream. Yeah. We can't let you go without asking, is Boris coming back? That's what we're reading in the papers. No, well, this week. I think you should be asking him apropos your conversation about you know having more kids. Is he's had eight kids? Uh, when you will bring him on and say, are you going to have any more? <laughs> 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 I mean, what about the the le on the level playing field when it comes to fertility? You know, he's yeah. going to be sixty like you, Nadia, and uh, he could probably carry on like Robert De Niro, who's had another baby, little tiny mm -hmm. daughter, aged eighty. So, yeah. Are you giving us some news here? <laughs> <laughs> listen, I wouldn't, listen, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing he does, nothing, nothing he does would ever surprise me. <laughs> but would like it that. surprise you if he came back into the Conservative Party? He is in the Conservative Party. No, well, Party. back into government. Well, listen, I mean, I think in the last 12 months, we've seen some amazing comebacks, haven't we? Trump is going to be the Republican nominee, having lost an election to Biden. Benjamin Netanyahu is, you know, causing chaos in the Middle East in many ways. Um, had a comeback in, I think, 2022. We've seen Cameron a comeback as Foreign Secretary. I wouldn't rule out a Tony Blair comeback. So what I'm saying is, never say never. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Funny, I'm mm. with you on that one. I put on bet on that in a long oh, time Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rachel, thank you very much. Thank Rachel you very Johnson. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.